A revolution is an internal war. You've got one group that wants to destroy the constituted authority, to displace it, and to take over. So you have the war you must win, but if you just stop there, you've only gone halfway. You've torn down the old, but you haven't completed the revolution until you build up the new. Only in the United States did we have a successful revolution, the war of the revolution, and a successful building of a new nation. Being an American in 1776 is not what being an American today uh, would be. Uh, when people talked about their country, my country, they meant their state. Jefferson meant Virginia, John Adams meant Massachusetts. Uh, they talked about being Americans, but they did it the way um, an Englishman or a Frenchman today might talk about, I'm a European. Those Americans in 1777 created an agreement called the Articles of Confederation. In 1781, the separate states ratified the Articles and became the United States of America. In reality, though, the Articles only loosely bound the states together and barely increased the powers of the self-appointed Continental Congress. The Constitutional Convention would change all that by creating a strong central government that could tax, regulate trade, and deny states certain powers, such as the right to print paper money. If anyone in 1776, a decade earlier, had proposed such a strong, distant national government, uh, he would have been laughed off the continent. Here in Philadelphia's Independence Hall, in the same room that had seen the debate over the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the 55 delegates met through the entire summer of 1787. George Washington presided over the sessions. If to please the people, we offer what we ourselves disapprove, how can we afterwards defend our work? Let us raise a standard to which the wise and the honest can repair. George Washington at the Constitutional Convention. Guards were posted at the door. The members of the convention took an oath that they would not reveal anything to the press outside. It was a secret convention through this whole period, but members of the convention said uh, we could never have done what we did if we'd been open to the public. The document the delegates drafted was only five pages long. Its first words, we the people of the United States, reflected the victory of the Federal Union over the rights of the individual states. Virginia's James Madison and younger colleagues drove the proceedings forward, but it was the very presence of the convention's president, George Washington, that shaped much of the document's content. All they had in, as a picture were governors and kings. They wanted a powerful commander-in-chief. They wanted someone who would be in charge of the army. And George Washington sitting up front as the president of the Constitutional Convention, the more they talked, the more they discussed this, they wanted this executive, and they didn't call it the president to begin with, they called it the, the executive, to look like and be like and act like George Washington. So they created it in the image of that man. When it came time for the delegates to sign the Constitution, its approval was uncertain. 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin took the floor. He made a speech which has become one of the classic rhetorical speeches in American history, arguing that they could sign it if each one of them realized that he was not infallible, that he would have to compromise, and most important, that it was the absolute best document that they could get at the time. I consent to this Constitution because I expect no better and because I am not sure that it is not the best. I cannot help expressing a wish that every member of the convention who may still have objections to it would with me on this occasion doubt a little of his infallibility and to make manifest our unanimity put his name to this instrument. Benjamin Franklin. Washington had presided over the entire convention seated in this chair. At the convention's successful conclusion, Franklin referred to the chair's ambiguous sun image. 
I have often looked at that behind the president without being able to tell whether it was rising or setting. But now, at length, I have the happiness to know that it is a rising and not a setting sun. Benjamin Franklin. <laughs>